Chantal Cody tells us about the journey chocolate has made throughout history. And I look for the perfect hot chocolate. I'm in London, and I've come to Mockham Street. I'm here to meet the doyen of all things chocolate, founder of Rococo, Chantal Cody. I've always dreamt of chocolate and lived this sort of fantasy world of chocolate. But you actually had chocolatey dreams? I did, really? I really did, yes. What would I mean, happen? I suppose it was having read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and this is way before they filmed it, so for me, that book is so full of beautiful imagery, um, and I would be wandering through these little sort of fields with Chocolate River running through it, and all the trees had sweets growing on them, and I'd put them under my pillow and oh. wake up in the morning and find nothing there. <laughs> it's a very tragic <laughs> childhood, really. Were you brought up with gypsies? <laughs> I was definitely a gypsy as a child. I was born in Tehran. I um, went to Addis Ababa and all sorts of places. Was there good chocolate at home? There wasn't good chocolate. Um, the only good chocolate I had at that time was probably the only good chocolate there was in England, which was handmade chocolate from St John's Wood in these beautiful boxes which were given once a year by right. Godfather. My father was a doctor. He used to drag us around with him on high days and holidays, so Christmas Day, you'd go into the hospital and do a ward round with him and be presented with these mammoth boxes of chocolate and you think, oh, how wonderful. Get home and open them and find everyone had turned white because it was about 20 years old. <laughs> They'd been That's kept right. in the wrong conditions. So perhaps something to do with that kind of feeling of frustration. I was looking for the perfect chocolate, but I certainly hadn't found it. When I was working in Harrods, I had the feeling that although they were selling beautiful chocolate and some of the best that was available, there was no love and no joy and no right, theatre. Yeah. The experience was missing somehow. And without being able to test the market because it didn't exist, I felt this real belief that it was going to work. And it was impossible to, to prove it one way or the other without actually doing it. Mm. So there I was, going to the bank with my little plan, saying, this is what I want to do. And people just kept saying, well, yeah, why not? The name Rococo comes from the word rocaille in French, which means shell work and scroll work. And it's an 18th century style of ornamentation, which is florid to the point of bad taste. And I thought, that's it. We set up a little chocolate making area within my own house on a tiny scale and we actually produced quite a bit of chocolate from there. Right. And then the next thing was we, we got a space in Dulwich where we had a much bigger space. And now we're actually making chocolate from this premises in Rockham Street which is, is very nice because the customers can actually come and watch the chocolate being made. And there are a lot of people who who drink chocolate instead of alcohol, for example, oh, say really? it's fantastic because it just get, gets you buzzing. Mm. And if you do a tasting of chocolate for people, they suddenly, you know, start off quite quietly and they get noisier and noisier in the way that you'd expect in a room full of people to party. So do you eat chocolate every day? I have a bit of chocolate most days, but right. I'm, because I'm surrounded by chocolate, yeah. I don't need to eat it every day. I have this security blanket. Right. Now, historically, at what point did chocolate become kind of a confectionery, having been, you know, a kind of rather strange and more exotic raw ingredient? I think that Fry's could probably take credit for having produced the first real eating chocolate bar. It was in the 19th century that Cadbury's got the recipe from Hans Sloan, so he was the one who brought milk chocolate to the right. UK. In fact, you could say he invented milk chocolate. If I followed you down the street, um, is, is there any circumstance in which you would admit that you might pop into a newsagent and buy a Lion Bar or a Kit Kat or a picnic? I might sneakily buy a Kit Kat if I was going to see my father-in-law for tea and I knew he didn't have any in the house. 
but okay. that's about as good as it gets. Can I tempt you to try one of my favourite chocolates, which is our house truffle? I'm willing to try one, yeah. Or two. Or um, six or seven. So what have you got on here? These square ones are the, the house truffle. They have these natural fruity notes in them, um, nothing added to it. But people say they get raspberry, plum, cherry, citrus. I'm just trying to get some of those fruits. Might have to eat some more. What about this one, and this that shiny one, one? This one is um, a little ravioli shape, which has got salted caramel in it. Wow, that's amazing. Which I love. Well, Chantal, thank you so much. And uh, long may you reign as the queen of chocolate. <laughs> thank you, William. It was great talking about chocolate with you. It's all very well buying great chocolates. But